Hello good people and welcome back to another video, this time on point of view, and we discussed this in English class. Point of view is the perspective of the person or kind of the being that is narrating a story. So it's their perspective, and we'll go through a few examples in this video. The first point of view example we'll talk about would be first person. So in this example, if we look in this picture of a typical classroom, here's Beth. And if we had a story of what was going on in this classroom, and Beth was telling us the story, she would use words like I and me and my because she's telling it and she's also there. So Beth would use words like I am writing on my piece of paper. When I look to my left, I see a student wearing a green sweater. I am listening to the teacher. My stomach is rumbling because I'm hungry. Those I, me, and my words would be a, the number one clue that this is first person. Our next point of view is second person. This is definitely less common. We do not see second person narrative done very frequently. But if it was done with this example again, we would hear words like you and your. So it would sound something like this. When you see a classroom that has eight students in it, you better pay attention. Some of these students might be looking at you. Some of them might be looking out the window. You really need to focus when you are working in a classroom like this. So we hear those you and your words repeatedly. That's second person. Again, it's not very common. Okay, now we're into third person. And I will do some examples with the picture. I just wanted to break it out because once we're into third person, there are three different types. So third person basically means that someone or some being outside of the story is telling the story. So clues for third person are like he, she, they, them, it. Those are all clues that you're in third person. However, once we're in third person, there's three different kinds. So the first one is objective. This is sometimes called the camera view. What we mean by that is third person objective would be just what a camera would see or a camera would film. So we'd get observations, but we would get no feelings and no thoughts. In third person limited omniscient, we'll have that camera view stuff where we get the observations of what's going on in the scene, but then we'll also have the thoughts and or feelings of one person. So only one person. When we're into third person omniscient, this is where we're going to get the thoughts and feelings of two or more people. So this is really when we have that outside eye that knows everything about what's going on. So here we are back to the same picture of the classroom, but this time I'm going to narrate the scene in third person objective. So I would use words like he or she or it, but no thoughts or feelings. The classroom is a typical classroom. Beth sits in the front row. Michael sits directly behind her. On the board is the homework assignment. Page 45 through 48, numbers 1 through 20. Chase stares at the ceiling. Sally stares out the window. This is third person objective. I'm describing what's going on in the scene, much like a camera would film it. No thoughts, no feelings. Here's the same picture, but I'll describe it now in third person limited omniscient. In the classroom, Beth sits in the front row center. Michael sits behind her. The assignment tonight is written on the board, page 45 through 48. Chase stares at the ceiling. Sally stares out the window. Sally is really worried. She knows that she has to do the homework assignment tonight, but when she gets home, it's going to be crazy. Her two younger sisters are always screaming. It makes it so hard for Sally to concentrate. She doesn't want to disappoint her teacher, but she doesn't know what she's going to do. In this example, I started out by describing the scene the same way, but then 
I narrated the thoughts and the feelings of just one character. That was Sally. I started to talk about how Sally was worried. So this is third person, limited omniscient. Now we'll take the same scene and we'll do this with third person omniscient. Now remember, again, with third person omniscient, I'm getting the thoughts and the feelings of two or more characters. In the classroom, Beth sits in the front row. Michael sits directly behind her. The assignment is written on the board, page 45 through 48, questions 1 through 20. Chase stares at the ceiling. This class is so boring, he thinks to himself. I can't believe the teacher just drones on and on. Sally is staring out the window. She looks like she's bored, but she's really not. Sally is worried about completing tonight's assignment. How is she going to do it with so much craziness going on at home? Michael, he stares at his paper, but his mind isn't here. Michael's worried about tonight's baseball game. His arm is still a little bit sore after two nights ago, and he's just not sure he's going to be able to pitch and live up to his expectations. So in this example, I started to describe the scene the same way, but then I took the thoughts and feelings of three characters and brought them in. Okay, so that's it, really. So remember, first person, we're going to have I, me, my, we. The narrator is directly in the story. Second person, we're going to hear the you and your pronoun a lot. And third person is going to be he, she, or it. And then once we decide it's third person, we have an additional decision to make. Are we in camera view, limited omniscient, or omniscient? And uh, watch the video a couple times if you have some questions. And thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.